let's take you back to our top story now. Um, as state governors clamor for the establishment of their own uh, social register for the disbursement of conditional cash transfer, Kaduna State Governor Ubasani has spoken against the scheme. Other reactions have also followed. Now here's a snippet of what he had to say. The cash transfer, I can say here, yeah, for me, my opinion is a scam. Completely it's a scam. Joining us now in the studio is economist and retired Federal Permanent Secretary, Hakim Baba Ahmed. Thank you for joining us on news night. Thank you for inviting me. You heard him saying there that it's a scam. And um, uh, how much of a scam could you call <laughs> yeah. fact sharing? And, and of course, uh, the state governors, how responsible should they be uh, when it comes to uh, the management of, of this uh, sharing? Well, first of all, no matter what we think of them, we have to operate within the law. Mm -hmm. Governors are entitled, states are entitled to, to funding, to funds from uh, the federation account. Uh, whether they are um, people of integrity or not, it's mm -hmm. secondary to the issue. So that's, that's, that's settled first. Mm -hmm. You mustn't touch a couple that belongs to states. Um, where there's money to be spent and it requires supervision or some kind of oversight by the federal government. That's mm -hmm. why you insist. So um, I think governors have a right to raise issues where they believe that they're being shortchanged. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you cannot take that decision alone at the federal level. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you should do, yesterday the vice president met with governors. Yeah. What stopped that meeting from making sure that these kind of issues are, are thrashed out. Uh, you sh it, it's just not tidy to have this kind of situation. Yeah, it was one of the issues they actually addressed, but insisted that cash transfer is still uh, the way to go, but it must be handled by the states. That's what they're saying. But now when you hear a state governor himself say, look, it's all a scam, it, it leaves you uh, wondering. But when, I mean, how can the 36 states and the FCT really be at the forefront of development if based on the sharing formula of, you know of fact the federal government gets 345 billion the states get 295 and of course the local governments get 218 so change the law right that's the law the law says that those percentages are there right. and you can you can change them this is the mm -hmm. reason why it's important to look at our federal system are we giving the federal government too much money are we giving the states too little money, too, local governments too little money? Where is the power concentrated and why is there a resource, where are these resources going? This is the why it's important that we prioritize revisiting the type of federal system we're having. Now, I have to say this. One of the good things that came out of the meeting yesterday, where the federal government and the governors rejected Buhari's um, old social investment policy, is one of the best things that came out. They rejected it outright and mm -hmm. said, I mean, if, if my governor, I'm from Kaduna State, yes, so that's my governor. Mm -hmm. If we have to use the word scam, it was what happened for those eight years under the so-called social investment policy. Mm -hmm. 12 million families. Where did President Tinubu pick them up from? He picked them up from the ground when Buhari was leaving and he dropped them. 12 million for households? Mm -hmm. When did you compute them? How could anybody have advised President Tinubu to distribute 500 billion naira to 12 million households and give each one of them 8,000 naira for six months. Yeah. So something was wrong in the entire conception. And what is the good thing that has come out of that? Is that we now know, we now know that all those social networks, social, social uh, whatever you call them, mm. power, uh, uh, trader money. Or Conditional cash transfer. Those yeah. were the scams that we right. live with. And uh, if, if governors today are saying, Let, let's, let's do a different thing, I think we should listen to them. Okay, then. What is important, yeah. if I may, mm -hmm. is that the governors must be transparently better than the way the federal government managed this. Right. Mm. They must be. And right now, people are saying, go and do it by your register. There's no governor who has a register. <laughs> so what that, that means is, is the that truth. they're going to come up with their own register. Mm -hmm. by all, and uh, and then you have to worry about where is, are they going to get this register from? When are they going to do this register? Are they going to give it to party people? Are they going to discriminate between supporters and non-supporters? When does this money actually get to people? Okay then. Um, 
If you're talking about 907 billion naira to be shared, mm -hmm. and we, we're still going to the World Bank uh, to borrow 500 million dollars, well, something doesn't seem to connect if, if I look at it very well. So, I mean, except my arithmetic is not <laughs> serving me right, make us understand why we still need to go cap in hand. We don't. We don't. And this is, this is why we need to revisit that loan. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm a bit worried that people tend to assume it's a done deal. It isn't. Hmm. If we are making so much money now because we are not paying subsidy, that means there's a lot more money coming into right. the, the federal kitty. I mm -hmm. mean, the, the national coffers. coffers. Yeah. Yeah. Then we have to ask whether we really do need to go out, cap in hand, to beg for those, those, uh, those 500 bill million. Mm. Billions, we do, um, and uh, when you look at the total uh, debt burden on this country, uh, and ask questions about what we used it for, you really have to worry. My advice mm -hmm. is, if I was, I was advising President, to carry on, mm -hmm. carry would be yeah. to say, <laughs> don't run, don't rush, don't rush into these these kind of. Um, Booby traps. Booby right. There are a as lot of booby, there are a lot of booby traps, mm. and it looks as if there is some level of haste in making an impact. You don't, mm. you mm. don't need. Like when I wrote my column last week in the Vanguard, I said it's a marathon. It's mm. not a dash. Right. You have four years to make an impact. What what is the rush in picking these bits and pieces up? They they, they don't make a cohesive sense. Mm. Why well, you're borrowing money, you have more money that is coming from the, the abolition of um, the subsidy. Mm -hmm. You haven't decided exactly how to deal with this. Mm -hmm. this not a cobo has gone out to anybody out on the street. The nation is screaming its head off saying, we can't live with this hardship. Something is wrong. And I think that the president, what the fair government needs to do mm -hmm. is to maintain its level head get the best advice from advisors. If they don't have them, they should need to advise, they need to advise them now. They need to appoint them now. And when, I mean, before swearing in, or during his inauguration, he actually said, look, he's gonna hit the ground running, mm -hmm. even during the campaigns. I, I guess that's what uh, President Tinubu is trying to achieve. Uh, but can Nigerians even wait at all? There seems to be this sense of urgency to get Nigerians out of, you know, these dire straits that um, you know they find uh, themselves. What needs to happen? I mean, uh, President Tinubu is now saying they're going to review the whole idea of the cash transfer. What kind of review do you think the president should be coming up with now, beyond the cash, you know, transfer of eight thousand? I don't think. I don't think. I think the should whole idea of the cash transfer. All? I think the whole idea of cash transfer is wrong. It's faulted from day one. It, it, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult to introduce any level of transparency in terms of sending out the, who we are sending out money to. Right. It's very difficult to, to probe it, is, um, to, to introduce some level of probity. Um, we've experimented with it. We haven't seen its impact six, seven, eight years under Buhari. We've been doing cash transfer. Why don't you take this money and examine in what ways you can actually invest it in a manner that it actually boosts the economy, even if it's in the shorter term? And Nigerians can say this, invested in agriculture, invested in security, invested in the development of communication technology. Mm. Those are areas where you can invest this money and you can see the result in a year or two. Now, Nigerians will scream whatever you do. You remove subsidy. The consequence of that is that life will be more difficult right. for everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, talking about what can be done, 35.3 billion US dollars is where our foreign reserve stands as we speak. Mm -hmm. Well, as of uh, April this year, mm -hmm. uh, one would say that, well, that would affect the strength of the currency, Absolutely. the standard of living, and what have you, balance of trade, balance of payment, and all that. Now, one would say that going to borrow from the World Bank, $500 million, is also a way of trying to shore up our foreign reserves. What kind of spending pattern should the uh, president be looking at? It should be a pattern that addresses areas that have potential for growth. Mm -hmm. You have to address agriculture because we're imminently facing the prospect of food shortage and mm -hmm. insecurity. 
That's very serious. Mm -hmm. You have to reduce the level of unemployment and mass poverty. You have to invest in areas that have fairly quick returns in terms of those investments. We're, we're talking, and you have to look at policies that can yield dividends within a year. So they have to be short term, but strategic investments in key areas. If you don't do this, you are going to waste time, and you, he doesn't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. People are going to lose patience. They are mm -hmm. living under very difficult conditions. They are saying, when, when, when? So first, jettison this cash transfer thing. Mm -hmm. Then put your best thinking caps and establish which areas in the economy are amenable to investments that can actually yield dividends. From and they where exist. you stand, what are those quick wins? Mm -hmm. One of them is achieved. agriculture. Right. Low hanging fruits, they call them. Uh -huh. Yes, low hanging yeah. fruits. Mm -hmm. there are, let me take, give you the best, the, one of them. In the north, right now, close to 25% of farmlands are not being harvested at all because of insecurity. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 75% that are being cultivated lack inputs, fertilizer, pesticides. As a result of that, we're going to have massive shortfalls in terms of food. When, northern, when the northern part of the country produces uh, less food, the whole country pays for it. Yeah. So you need to invest in this. If you're going to give any subsidy to anybody or assistance to anybody, mm. target the agricultural sector. Isn't that then where the infrastructure, infrastructure funds for states? I mean, the president just approved that and is expected to address some of these uh, you know, areas that you talk about. Well, I'm hoping that, uh, I, I'm, I know they had a, a very lengthy meeting yesterday with oh. the deputy, with the vice president. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he's a governor, and, uh, and uh, he was a good governor. He should understand that. It's a good thing, in principle, to devolve some responsibility to states and say, listen, listen, you guys take this money, go and decide where it goes. But don't tell them to go and design their own register and then put money, pocket money in people's pockets. That's the wrong way about it. You also have to introduce some levels of transparency. Who is going to account for this money? Who is going to follow these billions and make sure that they actually do become useful? And then how much room for maneuver do state governments have? Must yeah. they put this money in people's pockets or should they take whatever it comes to them mm. and then invest in areas where in transportation to reduce yeah. cost of movement, in agriculture, in, in, in some uh, small and medium scale enterprises that have the potential for uh, fast yielding dividends. Mm. Those are important things. So the bottom line is I think we should all avoid this tendency to lose our heads. All right, that's We've a good already place. committed ourselves yes. to a difficulty mm -hmm. and uh, getting out of it requires wise, wise counsel mm. and a level head. Indeed. Thank you so much, Hakim Baba Ahmed, economist and uh, retired federal permanent secretary. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.